Welcome to another episode of Full Build Friday, where I try to build a character from a comic, game, or similar source using the baseline rules of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. These characters are built on Path Builder 2E. This week's build is for one of my favorite characters from League of Legends, Sejuani, Fury of the North. Trust nothing but your strength. First and foremost, we have to establish some build goals for Sejuani. Born in the frigid north of the Freljord, she was raised by her grandmother, a woman as harsh and unforgiving as their homeland. As an iceborn, Sedge is more resistant to the cold and able to wield true ice. This helped her connect with Ash, but their friendship soured when Sejuani took to raiding. During one of these raids, she freed a Druvask boar that she trained as her mount, Bristle. She eventually seized control of the Winter's Claw by slaying her mother. From a gameplay perspective, Sejuani is a vanguard, a type of tank that specializes in leading the charge and initiating fights. Her passive matches her epithet. Fury of the North grants her ice armor that enhances her defenses and makes her immune to slows, though this armor cracks and crumbles after she takes damage. Arctic Assault causes Sejuani and Bristle to charge forth, slamming into and knocking up the first enemy hit. Winter's Wrath has Sejuani lash out with her flail, the first time in a long straight line, and then in a cone that slows enemies struck. Permafrost passively marks targets, and once fully marked, Sedge can throw out a trap to freeze them in place. Her ultimate, Glacial Prison, is similar to her permafrost, but involves her throwing out frost bolas that freeze a foe at range while creating a slowing snowfield around them. Sejuani also has a card in Legends of Runeterra, which has Overwhelm and Frostbites and marks an enemy with Vulnerable when summoned. Once leveled, she causes the first instance of damage dealt to the enemy Nexus to Frostbite all enemies. We have our goals, so let's make like the Amish kids down the street putting up a barn and build some character. Naturally, we'll start with Sejuani's ABCs, her ancestry, her background, and her class. We can stick with the human ancestry for this build, utilizing the Winter Touched heritage as a nod to her being an Iceborn, with its resistance to frigid environments. Qua Bon is normally for Shawanti characters, but I tend to do these builds setting agnostic, and as such, use Tribal Bon to give Sejuani the trained proficiency in athletics as well as the assurance feat with it. Growing up as a member of the Winter's Claw, Sejuani went on raids, which is how she discovered Bristle. Again, setting agnostic, so she will use the Ulfen Raider background to be trained in intimidation and sailing lore. This lore skill may seem a little odd, but it is a nice nod to her Tusk Raider in Legends of Runeterra. She also gains the Intimidating Glare skill feat. This may perhaps be the weirdest part of the build, but Sejuani is actually going to use the Kineticist class. This class lets her use Constitution as her primary ability score, which will play into her tankiness, and the first element of her dual gate will be Water, allowing her to make elemental blasts that deal cold damage. She uses Weapon Infusion to shape her melee blasts into her Frozen Flail. Reach for her first slash, followed by a second elemental blast with the Sweep trait fits nicely for her Winter's Wrath. She's going to focus on cold and ice theme impulses such as Winter's Clutch, which creates a frigid area that also deals damage. However, Sejuani will also take the Earth element to better match some of her defensive capabilities. She starts with Armor and Earth, the extra protection it grants reflecting her Fury of the North passive. Though she isn't likely to use its blast, nor does she really want any of its other impulses. Again, it's mainly just nice for its defensive properties, and those will scale as she levels. She is trained in nature as a kineticist, and will also become trained in acrobatics, crafting, and survival. Since she is a kineticist, Sejuani gets to prioritize her constitution to make her even sturdier as she levels, and then strength, since she will focus on melee elemental blast, and so that she can use her earthen armor. From her skills, she focuses firstly on athletics, because a number of her abilities involve her bullying people around the battlefield. Then, survival, to allow her to thrive in her arctic home, Finally, she will invest in crafting, since Permafrost mentions that she throws out snares. At second level, Sejuani takes Kinetic Activation, partially to fill out her class feats, but also because as an Iceborn, she has a unique ability to wield true ice artifacts, and I think this is a decent way to represent that. For the traps that are described as part of being her Permafrost ability, she'll take Snare Crafting as well. While she is still without a mount by third level, Sedge picks up Ride as a prerequisite for something that is coming up shortly. This level also sees a skill increase to her athletics, bumping it to expert. We get to immediately follow up her ride feat with a reason for taking it, the Mammoth Lord Dedication. This gives her a mount, and while Bristle most closely resembles a boar, the boar animal companion doesn't quite work for her, and we have to talk at least a little bit about why that is. The support benefit of the boar, and the Triceratops which I also considered, only triggers off of strikes. However, elemental blasts aren't strikes, 
their whole activity unto themselves, meaning that they will not trigger the support benefits. The Rhino support benefit only requires Sejuani to deal damage, which will also work with her blast, though it has a more minor effect. Despite this minor setback, we're going to stick with using the Rhino Animal Companion and flavor it as Sedge's Druvask Boar, Bristle. For her skill feat, Sejuani takes Forager so that she can feed her tribe, the Winter's Claw. The main thing of note at 5th level is that Sejuani gains a Gates Threshold. She doesn't need any more elements, so she will expand the portal for this one and all future Gates Threshold. The Water Impulse Junction allows her to shove enemies around with her two action impulses, feeding into the knockback of Winter's Wrath, while she'll use the Deflecting Wave Impulse to become sturdier, allowing her to gain resistance on a reaction she otherwise wouldn't be using. A social Darwinist to the extreme, Sejuani has no time for the paltry magic of hags, and will thus pick up Witch Warden with her Ancestry feat. She'll also spend a skill increase to bump Survival up to Expert. At 6th level, Mature Megafauna and Companion enhances Bristle so that he can fight alongside his master even if she isn't issuing commands. There's a lot of big threats in the Freljord, and Sejuani can pick up Titan Wrestler to handle them, or Bristle when it gets too unruly. Thanks to the Kineticist being a constitution-based class, Sejuani has a decent pool of hit points, and she will enhance them even further at 7th level with the Toughness General feat. She can also now increase her athletics to master proficiency. At 8th level, we can take Incredible Megafauna Companion to make Bristle into an indomitable Druvask Boar, <coughs> Rhino, <coughs> which substantially increases his constitution and gives him his advanced maneuver. Rhinoceros, I mean, Boar Charge. This is a great way to represent Arctic Assault, as it gives Bristle a stride that he can follow up with a strike that deals additional damage. It feels natural for Sejuani to pick up the Express Rider skill feat, so she'll do so at this level. We get another Gates Threshold at 9th level, and Winter Sleet is kinda cool, but if I'm reading it right, Bristle would unfortunately be affected by it, meaning that Sejuani might have to save it for if she ever becomes dismounted, or is otherwise just willing to accept that risk. This does make enemies in the area easier to hit, and therefore crit, which stacks nicely with its secondary effect of slowing enemies that she critically hits with her Water Blast. This lockdown can be used in combination with her Earth Aura Junction, to make it very difficult for enemies to get around her, allowing her to better serve as a tank and a peeler. The Juani is certain that she's destined to become the Queen of the Freljord, no matter what others tell her. I feel like that fits well with the Haughty Obstinacy Ancestry feat. Also, she gets the opportunity to increase survival to Master Proficiency this time. Arctic Assault includes a knock-up effect, and I try to include that with Staggering Blow at 10th level. This requires Sejuani to spend two actions to command Bristle, which allows him, in turn, to make a strike that deals extra damage and inflicts the slowed one condition. The All of the Animal skill feat gives her another way to feed the many people of her tribe when she has a Great Beast slain. The Fast Recovery General feat at 11th level plays into the general tankiness and durability of Sejuani, in particular making her better at fighting off poisons and diseases. With her primary skills already at Master, she starts investing in crafting by increasing it to Expert. So, I gotta be honest, this 12th level feat doesn't seem like it does much, but I promise you, Gigantic Megaphonic Companion does have a purpose. Mechanically, it makes Bristle huge, and provides no other benefits. This mainly serves to make him a bigger obstacle, but will have another reason in a few levels. Sejuani excels in her wintry environs, and this is further represented by her terrain expertise skill feat for the Arctic. With 13th level comes another Gates Threshold, and with it, a very important impulse. Glacial Prison. Aside from having the exact same name as Sejuani's ultimate, its freezing effects also mimic both her ultimate and the stun of her permafrost. This does unfortunately have the incapacitation trait, but it scales with her level. She can also take the Water Skill Junction to enhance her athletic skill while channeling her elements, or the Water Critical Blast, which deals splash damage and could potentially represent the Ice Storm of her alt. However, Sejuani will be making most of her blasts in melee, and doesn't want to get caught in her own crossfire, so it could be skipped if that's not the way you want to go. For similar reasons as Haughty Obstinacy, Stubborn Persistence is a fantastic ancestry feed for Sejuani. At this point, you might even say that she can be a little pig-headed. With her skill increase, she'll keep bumping up her crafting. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is one of those builds where the character uses almost all of their class feats for archetype feats instead. Case in point, at 14th level, she takes Specialized Beastmaster Companion to give Bristle the Bully specialization, making him even better at menacing and pushing enemies around. 
There is a slight focus on making your snares in these levels, and that will be further explored with a specialty crafting skill feat for snares. Sejuani is a leader of her people, and has earned their respect despite her harshness. At 15th level, pick up the pace allows her to hurry her comrades onward in desperate situations, at least partially representing this concept. She'll also increase athletics to legendary proficiency. With Titan Wrestler, this means that she can now push around colossal creatures. At 16th level, she takes Specialized Megaphonic Companion, again! This time though, she will use it to make Bristle into a Wrecker. This makes Bristle stronger, increases his athletics, and allows him to better punch through barriers, potentially allowing him to charge through walls. By taking Impeccable Crafter as her skill feat, she increases her ability to put together traps and snares even further, which helps to compensate for her lower intelligence bonus. This focus on traps though might seem a bit weird, and maybe like I'm extrapolating too much from the flavor of one of her abilities. If you feel that way, I would consider investing in Intimidation instead, and some of its skill feats, because as a rider, Sejuani can't get a lot of use out of the jumping base athletic skill feats. 17th level is Sejuani's final gates threshold, and it gives her the Assume Earth's Mantle Impulse. This is a fun impulse that she can only really make use of thanks to Gigantic Megavana Companion. If Bristle didn't have that, she would be too large to ride him after activating this. Aside from the general buffs, such as making her large, increasing her reach and strength, and making her harder to move around, it does provide a unique benefit. Assume Earth's Mantle is a stance, which means that when Sejuani channels elements, she can choose to activate it as part of that action. The final clause says that when she uses this, she can add the effects of armor and earth to this impulse. This means that she can armor up when she channels elements instead of having to spend the additional action she's had to do so up until now. Befitting her status as a leader, Sejuani takes a Heroic Presence Ancestry feat, which makes her and her team even tankier, and then she will increase her survival to Legendary. Nourishing Gate at 18th level offers some bonuses against effects that would paralyze Sejuani, which unfortunately is the closest she really gets to the slow immunity of her passive. In an attempt to harden herself and prove her toughness, Sejuani used to face the deathly chill of her home and not but her skivvies. To represent that, I'll give her the Legendary Survivalist skill feat. Clearly, Sejuani's nowhere near hard enough to kill between her resistances, her armor and earth, and the HP pools of herself and Bristle. As such, at 19th level, she takes the Die Hard General feat. She also bumps crafting up to Legendary, which is weird, but again, she needs bonuses because she has invested absolutely nothing into her intelligence. For her Capstone feat, I did consider Legendary Rider from her Mammoth Lord archetype. However, I felt that Kinetic Pinnacle provided her with a little more versatility, since there are three actions it can be used for instead of the Legendary Rider's one, and that one action wouldn't even be able to use for alternative ways to command the animal, such as Staggering Blow. That being the case, I decided to leave it on the wayside and give her the Kinetic Pinnacle instead. Her final skill feat is Legendary Guide, which further delves into her role as a leader of her people. But that is 20th level, and that means we have come to the end of our build. Let's review. It may be something of a twist, Sejuani is a winter-touched human kineticist with a raider background who wields the elements of earth and water, though she'll lean towards sticking to the cold aspects of it. Her heritage makes her better suited to survive arctic environments, befitting an iceborne, whereas the ability to wield true ice could be demonstrated through her kinetic activation feat. Since the boar animal companion doesn't synergize with kineticist, she'll instead take a rhino animal companion with her mammoth lord dedication to represent bristle. Sejuani leads the Winter's Claw, using feats such as Forager and All of the Animal to keep them fed, pick up the pace and legendary guide to ease their travel, and Heroic Presence to bolster them in battle. A true blue tank, Sejuani and Bristle have over 550 hit points combined, and can keep enemies off of her backline through their sheer size and her earthen aura. The protection offered by her Fury of the North passive is represented by Armor and Earth, Deflecting Wave, and options that make her more resistant to adverse effects, such as Fast Recovery and Nourishing Gait. For her Arctic Assault, Sejuani can command Bristle to perform a Staggering Blow that slows enemies as per the knockback. Or, she can use the Advanced Maneuver of the Rhinoceros, the Rhinoceros Charge, which allows Bristle to stride and then make a Horn Strike that deals additional damage. She uses Weapon Infusion for her Winter's Wrath. She can give her Elemental Blast Reach for the initial Lash, and then give it the Sweep Trait for the Broad Swing. Snare crafting and her related crafting feats help to create the thematic effect of her permafrost, though the actual freeze effect is represented by the Glacial Prison Impulse, which also serves as her ultimate, matching perfectly down to the name. For the frost storm that surrounds her ultimate, it'll take around, but she could follow up Glacial Prison with Winter's Clutch. 
The vulnerable status inflicted by her card in Legends of Runeterra allows her to force a fight, which she can somewhat do through her tankiness and by how difficult it is to get around her. This brawny beefy bay bosses about a burly behemoth boar as she bashes, batters, and busts up both barricades and brigands with her boreal bludgeons and blasts. Let me know what you think of this build and what other characters you might like to see. You can check out the blog for a deeper breakdown of the build, which also includes items and suggestions for free archetype games. That, along with the Monster Monday, Twitter, and Discord are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic Friday. The Winter's Claw demands that you like and subscribe, and a true Iceborne remembers to hit the bell icon to be updated for every new Full Build Friday video.